So, Anna and the Apocalypse. I may or may not have watched this nine times in 48 hours. The story itself is really basic in its premise. A zombie apocalypse breaks out, and this bunch of high school students have to travel from wherever they're at to their school, which is a safe haven, so that they can then pick, be picked up by the military and taken to safety. So you're like, well, why in the world would I want to watch this? This sounds stupid at, at best, right? Well, the most unique thing about Anna and the Apocalypse is that it's a musical. It's a zombie musical, and it's also a Christmas zombie musical. It takes a lot of cues from Shaun of the Dead, except this time it's not so much of a social commentary, but it is more of a satire on like teen movies or romance movies or even kind of zombie movies. The big draw for me in this film is the songs. The songs are super catchy. They're like just pop songs that get stuck in your head. And then the lyrics themselves are amazing. They just have huge messages buried within them. There's one song in particular called Hollywood Ending. And it sounds a lot like Tonight Tonight by Hot Shell Ray. I mean, I would love to hear somebody remix the two or smash them up together because I think it could really work. But regardless of that, the, the lyrics and the words within, well, the lyrics are the words. So anyway, within Hollywood Ending, provide all of that satire information that you need for the film. The songs themselves, I mean, you just, they get stuck in your head. They're infectious and you want to sing along. There's another song, and because this is at Christmas time, it's kind of Santa Baby-esque, and you have to listen to the lyrics. They are so genius. I mean, they're either going to make you chuckle or blush. You have four main characters who are really good. I mean, they work well together as a team and, and separately. I mean, they have good chemistry. And then you have this addition of this jock. And what's funny is he's just this, I mean, well, he's a jock. He's like the can do anything. I mean, his dad is a general in the army. And so he is just, he's expected to be all man. And he has this falsetto that is amazing when he sings, just completely unexpected. And his eyes, they're just like this crystal clear green or blue that just, they'll peer right into your soul. And I said there are a lot of cues to Shaun of the Dead, and some of it are the main character's obliviousness to like the chaos and mayhem going on behind them. But in Shaun of the Dead, that was used as the social commentary of just how we're zombies going through life, not paying attention to anything. And in this, it's it's a sing-along. I mean, Anna and her friend John are both singing these parts as they meet together. And just the utter dismay and, you know, zombie apocalypse that's happening behind them is outstanding. There's also a scene right at the end of the film that is a complete homage to Edgar Wright. I mean, it is just shot and edited to his style. You do have some drama and romance that are interweaved throughout the story, but keeping with the whole Hollywood ending theme, especially with the lyrics, it doesn't always end up exactly how we want it to. And there is a part between the two main leads that's just gonna make you go and oof. At the school the main characters are trying to get to, there is this headmaster. And he's weird and kind of creepy, but he's just really disturbed. But the best part about him is he sings. And when he sings, I kid you not, he sounds exactly like the Crypt Keeper from Tales from the Crypt. I mean, I have this Crypt Keeper, uh, Tales from Christmas, or we miss you, wish you a scary Christmas, something like that. It's just a Christmas album featuring the Crypt Keeper, and it is awesome. But the dude, the headmaster, sounds identical to him, even though he's not the voice of the Crypt Keeper. There are some points of the story and the film that I felt drag. And I really found myself at those moments wishing that there would just be more singing because that was really what was carrying the film along and helping propel it. So it was it was almost a full musical. There was just parts of it where, you know, there's a lot of dialogue or there's some downtime. And in those, I really just found myself wanting more. Surprisingly, the zombie violence isn't that gory. I mean, it is there and there is some gore to it, but not like other Zed films. I mean, it is just... That's not the central focus of this. And so while it's there, it's not terrible. So if you are squeamish at, at a lot of blood and guts, know that 
there's some in this, but it's not outrageous and it's not the central focus of what's going on. So you don't see people just being dismembered all over the place or, you know, their head being split open and they're eating and everything. I mean, a lot of the violence that happens within there is played up for some comedy. I mean, there's also one moment that I think of where between Anna and John, the two main characters and this zombie, something happens. And John is standing there. He's kind of he's kind of the focal point, but he's kind of also off to the side a little bit of the camera. And he just has this scream. And it, it it's not scary. It's hilarious. I think that's also something to keep in mind that the movie itself is not scary. There are some tense moments, but they're played for more of the tension within there and within the characters to set up the whole satire that's going on versus the edge of your seat, biting your nails, terrifying type of zombie flick. Now, yes, the movie itself is not good enough to warrant nine viewings in two days. I get that. I have a problem when it comes to musicals sometimes and admitting that you have a problem is the first step. But I got to say, multiple viewings of this film did make it that much better. So the first time I watched it, I was like, yeah, that was pretty good. You know, I, I see a lot of the negatives in there and I was like, ah, well, there were some things that I wish were, like I said, you know, there was more singing, less some of the downtime within there. But as I kept watching it, I picked up more and more and I just enjoyed it overall a whole lot more. So if you have seen this or you're gonna watch it and short of you absolutely hating it, Watch it a second time. Overall, it's a good film and a fun watch. I would recommend you see it. There's no sex or nudity. There is a lot of violence and a lot of profanity. I give Anna and the Apocalypse four out of five couches. What genre of movie would you like to see made into a musical? I'd love to know in the comments below. What could you, what kind of weird thing would make just this off musical that would, might actually work? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris, this is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.